so tonight, uh, our program is going to be the first thing we're going to honor Ann Holtgren with a lifetime membership award. Uh, then Carmen Scott is going to do a program on thread grafting uh, for roots and branches. And then I'm going to do a program on um, side grafting uh, pines and junipers. So, uh, and after the uh, meeting, uh, after the presentations, we'll have a short business meeting. Uh, I'm going to ask if everyone would please mute yourselves for the presentation, uh, just to keep out extraneous background noise. I'd appreciate that. So, first of all, I have the honorary guest here this evening, uh, Ann Holgren. Uh, for those of you, I know most of you, most of us that have been in Bonsai for a while know Ann. I've been in Bonsai for a while. Ann Holgren has been an active member, active and contributing member of our Bonsai community for many, many years. I think since the mid-1990s. So, um, my personal experience with her started at the uh, at a Kathy Shaner workshop at El Dorado Bonsai back in the mid 90s. And I can remember the first uh, workshop I had with her, I was sitting there with my puny looking little trees and looking at her trees going, I wonder if I'll ever have a tree that looks that good. Mm. So, <laughs> so any you've never had puny trees. <laughs> oh, yes, I have. <laughs> I've come, I've come a long way actually since those those days. So um, uh, I'm just going to give you a brief bio, just to kind of give you a background on uh, on Anne. Uh, she was born and raised in Oregon. Her interest in plants uh, became obvious from childhood. Uh, she used to pick up trees in the yard waste. Uh, along the streets and take them home. She had a little garden plot at home where she would take these things home and plant them. So like her, her famous green thumb was already uh, in action. So she's known for being able to grow just about anything. Um, her education, uh, she, she earned a degree in biology at Willamette University in Salem, Oregon. Uh, then she went on to obtain her nursing degree from the University of Oregon Medical Center in Portland. She began her professional career at the University of, um, of Oregon at Salem, or University of Oregon Medical Center in Portland. Uh, she worked there for four years, moved to Sacramento, and correct me if I get any of this wrong, Pat, okay? <laughs> uh, moved to Sacramento in 1969 and then devoted the next 25 years of her um, nursing career to um, uh, Roseville Hospital, which later became Sutter Roseville. Um, her bonsai life, I just want Anne for you to share with us the moment that you were inspired, the first thing that, that um, keyed you into the fact that you were gonna be, that bonsai was gonna be part of your life. Well, I can't say that I knew it would be, become part of it, but um, I saw my first bonsai at the State Fair in Oregon. The State Fair in Oregon, okay. And, um, which is, of course, in Salem, since it's the capital, and, and was immediately struck with the beauty of the art. But and, until my children were grown, because I was a, turned into a single parent raising two kids, and until they were off pretty much on their own. I didn't actually join a club, but okay. as soon as I felt comfortable with that, I joined. Okay. In 1992. 1992. Well, Anne became a serious uh, student of Bonsai in, in the mid-1990s. I guess it was about 1992, huh? Yeah. Yep. Uh, she began her um, Bonsai studies, as many of us did, uh, taking classes from Earl Fong and Tim Johnson. Um, I remember those days. I think a lot of us got started way yeah. back then. Uh, she went on to complete, uh, she also went on to complete uh, six years uh, of Satsuki Azalea training with Master uh, Tatamori Gondo from uh, Japan at Aldorado Bonsai Nursery. 
She also joined uh, advanced study groups with Kathy Shaner starting in the 1990s and then later with uh, Bonsai Master Peter T. Uh, Anne first joined ABAS in 1992 mm -hmm. and immediately became a very um, active and functioning member of the club. She uh, was a recording secretary. Under Tim. Under Tim Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was president. In, under president, yeah, yeah, Tim Johnson at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she was treasurer for 10 years. You know, some kind of a milestone. I can't imagine anybody being treasurer for 10 years, but Anne did that and she kept incredibly good records. Um, she also served as our vendor chair for um, spring shows as far back as I can remember. Another huge job in getting vendors to line up to come to our spring shows. Um, she also volunteered help with most ABAS functions. Uh, I don't think I can remember seeing a spring show where she wasn't sitting in the consignment area, helping out with consignments or um, helping set up the show, you know, coming on Friday night and helping with the show setup. Um, also with the Garden and Arts Center, the spring and fall sales. Um, she's just kind of was a go to person when you needed help, you called Anne and she was always there to help you. So much appreciated all of that. Um, a lot of it was just plain fun. It was fun, <laughs> yeah. It was, you did it because you enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. Um, ABAS was not the only club that benefited from uh, Anne's membership. She was a very active member of the Satsuki uh, Azalea Club, uh, served as president for several terms. Um, also a very active member of Sacramento Bonsai and Bonsai Seki Kai. Uh, she was equally involved in the, uh, with the Golden State Bonsai Federation, where she um, assisted uh, in conventions with uh, being the vendor chair in uh, years 2002 and 2006. Uh, she was district A trustee from 2001 to 2005. And I know she was one of the few District A trustees that actually made the effort to go around and visit the clubs, which is you know part of their their duties. Um, she also served as a docent. She and Betty Pitts volunteered to be docents at the Bonsai Garden Lake Merritt uh, for eight years. Right there was was it once a month to be uh, the docent. Um, and then uh, she was awarded uh, by the uh, Capital City Bonsai Society. In 2011, she was awarded uh, uh, a plaque and on the, um, the Bonsai Garden Lake Merritt Wall of Fame. So she's had quite, quite a long history in this area. As with many of us also who initially become uh, interested in bonsai and also became interested in Suiseki and has a beautiful Suiseki collection. Um, I guess, uh, do, do you have any stories to share about how you got started in um, collecting Suiseki? Well, <clears throat> growing up in Medford, Oregon, you're close to the Rogue River and the Agate Desert. And the Rogue River has agate bearing gravels and petrified wood, sun fossils, jasper. So I've been picking up rocks since I was old enough to bend over and pick them up. <laughs> and uh, my dad would fish and I would scavenge on the gravel bars. Oh, okay. But, uh, so I've always liked rocks, but there's a, a beauty and an art in the viewing stones that Suiseki involves that, that if you like rocks anyway, it kind of grabs you. It grabs you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think. I've had that same experience, Anne. Oh, yes. <laughs> collecting, collecting stones along the Klamath River while fishing. I have a box of agates and what have you that have moved with me from Medford to Portland to that times and agates, you know, just as far as what I do. <laughs> So um, also, uh, I pre pre prepared a uh, short slideshow um, 
about a visit to Anne's garden just to give you guys a little um, tour through her garden and her trees and her stones. So if uh, Paul could uh, start that slideshow for us, I'd appreciate it. concludes our, our program. Um, I was going to uh, ask if anyone has questions or comments or anything they would like to share about Anne. Uh, I'd like to hear you know, questions or anything. Hey uh, Anne, this is Carmen and I wanted to tell you how much the Reading Bonsai Club appreciated when you and Betty Pitts came up, drove two and a half hours probably farther to do a, an azalea demo and you brought some for sale and nobody would ever come up to Reading. And I was, we were so appreciative that you made that effort. And I wanted to thank you. Okay. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for you. Oh. I want to know what your site was and do you still have it? The first decent bones I had was done in my first workshop, which was uh, Tree, tree maple planting with Jim that Jim Barrett did with us. Oh, okay. And, uh, and no, I don't have it. And I, he, I sold it. You sold it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Um, well, we would say something uh, representing the family. Uh, first of all, that's the granddaughter that was in the picture. So it's been a few years since that picture was taken. Um, and she does have a grandson too, who probably has the greener thumb out of all of us. So he's getting that from his grandmother. Um, and all I remember is when she retired in 97, I believe, that we, everybody's like, oh, what's your mom's gonna do? And I'm like, oh, trust me, she'll, she'll find something to do. And um, Bones I soon took over her life. Um, at one point, I remember being very pregnant and she was off gallivanting, I believe in Japan, um, on a bonsai trip. And, um, but being very pregnant and trying to water, I don't know, it seemed like 3000 trees. It was probably only 300 trees, but it was still, I finally had to say to her, mom, I can't do this anymore. When, when you're gone, I just can't do this anymore. Um, it got a little overwhelming. Um, and especially, you know, having a young child shortly after that. But she had bonsai at my wedding. Um, she had, I believe we had at least one bonsai at um, my husband's memorial service. We've had, well, probably, I, I, yeah, I think we had a bonsai at Dylan's graduation. Yeah, probably. At and we'll probably have it at Sierra's graduation. So bonsai are is a part of our life, even though I am not carrying on 
that green thumb, I don't have that green thumb. So yeah. um, Dylan will have to, and I don't know if Dylan's gonna say anything. So, um, but congratulations, mom. I know this has been a major part of your life um, and it still is. So it's, it's, it's not like the you know end. And Annie, every time we um, go to your house, I love your enthusiasm saying, come check out the plant or the, the orchids are blooming or the, let's look at the blueberry that we just moved. And seeing that has always been really great. Seeing that, that something that my grandma really loves is really beautiful and it's touching to me. And I just, I love seeing that joy at all of your shows and in your backyard. And, and just as we drive by and you point out all the different plants and the trees and things that I would never, ever know without you telling us so it's we're very very proud of you and we love the work that you do and we know you'll just keep doing it even though we do tease you and mom did you know that the ginkgo is a living fossil because you do <laughs> like to tell us that quite fre frequently but yes. you know but now we can tell it now we joke with other people and we just giggle about it when we see a ginkgo we're like oh that's a living fossil and we laugh about it <laughs> we love you mom yeah <laughs> i'll speak up too uh, hi everybody, I'm Dylan. I can't have my uh, camera on because of poor Wi-Fi issues, but um, I'm Annie's grandson. Uh, I'm up in Salem, Oregon at the same college that Annie went to. Uh, and I, Annie's backyard for my whole life has been one of my favorite, favorite places in the world. In part because of just how calming and beautiful it is with all of the plants around but the plants don't just make that experience I mean a forest is nice but it's not quite the same as Annie's backyard because of all the love that she puts into every one of her plants and that just you can tell when you look at any one of her trees or any one of her flowers that she has spent the time to really learn about it and care about it and I think that that is just a quality that just into every aspect of her life. And it's one of my favorite things about her. And uh, I love you, Grandma. So congratulations. Good. It's good to have you guys here. Glad, glad to have, have the family. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd just like to share that um, Anne has been a very long time friend of my family, my mother, you know, all along in one side together with Anne and um, also my husband, Gary, and so, uh, and myself, and uh, we appreciate just the generosity that Anne has done for Bonsai and the knowledge that she shared. Thank you, Anne. In addition to Bonsai and Suiseki, Anne also dabbles in calligraphy. The, the photo behind us, you probably can't see all that well, was one that Anne drew. So thank you, Anne. Very nice. So, yeah. Anybody else have anything they would like to contribute before we um, conclude this portion? I just want to say that uh, the tree that we have here is a, a California juniper that uh, the club got from Anne. And this is going to be, a, we thought we were going to auction it off in, um, in December, <laughs> but COVID changed all of our plans. So uh, we still have the tree. Uh, this will be auctioned off, uh, hopefully in September when we have our, our um, club auction. So I just wanted to have it sitting here because it's such a beautiful tree. Okay, well, I guess then I will um, conclude the program by, um, awarding Anne with a lifetime membership to uh, the American Bonsai Association. Um, and thank you, Anne, for all of, the, all of the time and the effort and the contributions that you have made to our bonsai community. And in addition, we have a gift certificate uh, from, uh, that will be from, for Jerry Braswell to have a uh, Dyson made it. I've been hearing from him. Have you been hearing from <laughs> Just tell him that, um, Pick out something that you want is yeah. a Dyson made and I um, found a couple of things that cool. I'll talk to him about. So oh, this is so special. Well, it's for your special. So <laughs> nice to be able to, um, to honor you for what you've done. Really overwhelming, really. <laughs>
Okay, well, with that then, I'm going to continue to the next section of our, our program this evening, which will be uh, Carmen Scott is going to do a section on thread grafting roots and branches. So I'm going to turn it over to Carmen. Okay. So my portion of the demo is going to be thread grafting. So I'm going to be doing two demos. The first one's going to be a branch thread graft and the second one's a root thread graft. They're both really simple. It's kind of surprising to me how well they work because the whole thing is connected with the roots and the, the branches, the branch that's going through the graft. So it's constantly being fed. So you don't have to worry about the whole thing dying because there's no connection. So let's go to the next slide. All right, here's the cambium, yay. Okay, <laughs> okay. a very thin layer of actively growing cells. And this is the part that we're concerned about with our thread graft. So the first one I'm going to do is a branch thread graft. So I need to pick the place where I want to put a branch and I'm going to make a black spot right there. That's where I want my branch to be. So I'm going to take my drill and I start here and I drill and I'm drawing from that point to the other side. All right, so there is my drilled hole. Now I'm going to get my branch and I am going to thread it through that hole. I'm going down the wrong way this one. Okay, going down through that hole. And so that this end, this is what the part I want. So here are my little buds that I'm going to be, that are going to be growing. And what happens, you have this intersection between the two cambiums, between the parent tree and the graft. And because that cambium is actively growing, this is going to continue to thicken. And at some point it's going to continue to thicken. This, this is what cambium does. It causes branches and trunks to thicken. So that's going to thicken. That's going to take off and grow. The other side, there's still another connection here on the lower left. That's also going to grow and fuse. But this is the part we care about, the part right up here, which is going to continue to grow. So once that's thicker, we know that the graft is actually taken. And the other side does not get thicker because it doesn't have the apical growth that the, the buds on the outer part cause it to grow faster. So once that whole thing, hold on, I to get my annotate thing working. Once the whole thing is grown out and you're pretty sure that it's fused and is taking the parent plant tree is taking the growth and doing all the growth. So we don't need this anymore. This part gets cut off. So that's a branch thread graft. So now I'm going to clear this. And we're going to try this again. This time we're going to do a root graft. So we're still doing the cambium layer. Going across here. And this is going all the way around. So now we want to do our where do we want our root graft? Well, let's say we want it right here. So this is where I'm going to drill. So we draw, drill from the root end. So we're going to get our drill bit. And here we go. We're going to go all the way through to the other side. There we go. We're going to take, this time we're taking a whip. So it's got roots and it has buds at the other end. And here we go. So we're going to thread this through here. Thread, 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 thread. And out the other side, but we're going to continue going all the way out until the roots that are on this side are snug up against the trunk of the tree. Because that's how we want it to look. We want the root to look natural so the the more roots we have coming out of here, the better it should look. So there's our roots. So then again, the same thing is happening. 
This is fusing up here on this cambium, and this thickens. And because there's an apical buds out here, this thing is going to just go flying out and grow way out. But we also have the thickening on this side and roots are also growing. So instead of not have anything happening down here, the roots are taking off and this is also growing. And it's gonna be a little harder to tell when they actually, when it's fused and it's taken over by the parent tree because this is under the surface of the soil. But you can either check the next time you repot or kind of maybe about a year later, you can check it to see if it's fused. And then you come in and just cut that off. So that would be a root thread graft. Okay, let's clear this. Norman, can cut. you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you tell me uh, when you were talking about doing this, so you have a seedling or something that's in a, in a cup that has roots. I mean, what, what, what is the original so, material that you're working from? So for the whip, and I'm going to go through this on the demo. I just wanted to kind of show you the whole, the whole process of it. But for the thread graft, you're usually using something that's on the original tree that you've grown out and then comes in through the trunk and you drill a hole and it goes through it. For the roots, you have to have a whip. And I'm gonna describe later on what it is, but basically it's a very tall, thin growing plant, the same species as the tree you're grafting. And you've got the small group of roots on one end, very long twiggy stem, twiggy whatever stem, and then buds at the end. So you usually grow those specifically for grafting. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna have pictures of them in the demo. Okay, next. Okay. Okay, next slide. So these are our materials. So all, it's very simple stuff. All we need is an electric drill and assorted drill bits. It's really nice to have an extra long, this is right there, an extra long drill for especially draw, drawing, drilling through Nabari because they can be quite thick and it's a ways to get through them and the shorter drill bits don't always get through. So it's nice to have at least one of those. We're gonna need skewers and I'll show you how those work later. Toothpicks to peg your graft into place, a Sharpie to mark where you're gonna do it and then there's cut paste to seal it at the end. Okay, now this is extreme, but this is how you prepare for branch grafting. It's always done in late winter, early spring, you want the buds to be just barely moving. If the buds start getting too big, then they're gonna get rubbed off as you take them through the hole. So hold on a second. Okay, so you can see this person has grown out all kinds of branches at the top of the tree. And I'm sure if they went straight up, they'd be at least twice as big as, twice as tall as this tree is. But they have wrapped them loosely in wire and curve them around to set them where they want their graft. So this is your prep work. You have to grow out some branches before you do this or else you won't have any material to do it with. And you can see where it's come across. So where do they put the branches? Like anywhere where you would normally put a branch. So we have a branch here and it's on the curve. There's gonna be one on the curve. And then we have that one. There's at least eight of these things and I'm sure they're going all over the place front and back, but you get the idea. You would put them where you would normally have a, have a um, branch. And I don't know what their plan was with this tree. It's, it's to me, it's extreme, but hey, it's, it would be great practice because you've got a lot of material to deal with. Okay. okay. Ooh, no, no. Hold on, I got it clear. <laughs> Otherwise it goes to the next slide. Okay. I'm still here. All right, and this is the tree that I'm going to do the thread graft on, the branch thread graft. This is Renee's Korean hornbeam, and she decided she wanted a branch coming out through the back. So she's my assistant, so she made sure that um, this worked and she was okay with what I did to it. Okay, next one. This is the prep for a root graft. So root graft's a little different. You have to do it when you repot the tree and you can see where they've 
cleared back a lot of the soil because you have to have access to the trunk because you have to have room to put the roots. So you've got to really clean out the tree. This person has drilled holes and you can see where the holes and the orange sticks that have gone through it. So I want to make the point that on this, all of the holes are coming out at the same level. So your Navari is going to look really good because it's flowing nicely out from the trunk and there's nothing really high, really low. So this is what you kind of want. And if you trace these and it's kind of difficult, you know, you would, you would put a root here. This would be a root and the other side would be the branch coming up out the other, other side. And the only thing, other comment I wanted to make was for this number of root grafts, you have a potential problem partly because of the congestion, but also as you drill holes, let's say I drilled the hole through here for this one, it was coming out the other end and then, okay, I want one over here. So I'm drilling this hole and coming right to here. Um, they could intersect right there. And then you don't have a root graft. You would, would one of the grafts would not go through. So that's why it's helpful to have these little sticks in here to mark where they're at. And that may help you if you have a number of them you want to do. I keep forgetting to turn off the annotate. Okay, next one. So the root graft I'm going to do tonight is on this trident maple. This is one of Renee's and it's pretty mature and it's quite nice, but we found this area in the base that would be improved by having root grafts. And I've pre-recorded, oh, what? No, nothing. Okay, so I've pre-recorded my demos and that happened in late January because things started to move. And if I didn't do the demo then, we weren't gonna have a demo. So I'm going to play the Korean hornbeam branch thread graft first and then follow it by the trident maple root graft, and then I will answer any questions afterwards. So Paul, if you want to start the video, please. Could you stop sharing, please? Well, I can do that. <laughs> okay. On this tree, which is the green horn bean, we are going to do a tread graft. We have a long, grown out, straight, thin branch that's gonna have a hole drilled and run through here, the trunk and come out and we'll create a new branch right there. It's a very handy we have. This green horn bean had a approach graft right here and this is stretched out, so this is getting better. So we bigger. So we have all of these branches out here that can be used as thread graphs. Now, this one's been wired into place, so we know it's going to reach the area where it needs to go. There's these other ones we could also use. I would wire them so you could twist them around. But this this is pretty flexy, so it shouldn't be a problem. If you want to do it ahead of time, Renee does the Santa and big branch. That's a good idea too. The reason we're going to do this on this tree is because and it needs branches. You can see the back, very flat. The only back branch is way up here. And then we've got all of this trunk that could stand to have some branches coming up that would be improved. So the first thing we do, we figure out where we want these graphs. And this is going to be where they come out. So this is where the branch forms. This is where the tip goes. That's the important spot. So I've decided on this one, it's below this branch. It's going to come out like that. So it won't interrupt the other branches. The second one I decided here, we have all of these scars, scar tissue, you need to avoid that. So if somebody's already done a graft and you've cut it off and want to try it again, you have to go in a different spot. So the other place is right there if we did that one. So those are marked. Now we're ready for a drill. We're going to drill this one. So before we drill, we have to decide what size bit we want for this. This is my branch. 
I need, I have a bud there. I have the branch there. It has to go, both of those have to go through. I can't let that bud rub off. So I've got this size drill bit. And although it's a lot bigger than that, it's about the size that I think I will need to use. If it doesn't work, I can go a bigger size. The other thing I didn't mention, once these start to swell, it's almost impossible to do this. This is why it's early spring, it's the end of January, and they're starting to swell just a little bit. This is the perfect time to do it. So that's what I'm doing. Move this out of the way. So that's where it goes. Instead of using this big drill through here, so I've tried this and it bounces all over the place. I like to use a little pilot hole. So here I go. It's going to be straight. There's no branches behind here. And I'm on forward, I think. Okay. See, and it bounces anyway, even with the small one. So I have to kind of oops, get it started. Get it started. <laughs> ah, I'm not going. It still slips, but it, I'm getting closer. There we go. Okay, so we're fairly straight. We're going to end up out there. Okay. This isn't like really dead wood because it. That should probably be enough. It fills up the drill bit because it's wet. It's alive. And now I'm going to change to the bigger drill bit. I have that same hole. I put some pressure and I push. Let's see, it should go right through there. And see how this is coming out and it's very, very green. You want to go fairly slow. You don't want to heat up the drill. And I'm backing it out. See this? So every once in a while you have to do that because it stops going forward. And now it should go. You said pushed in, right? Okay. It's going forward. I'm going to pull it out again. See what I got. Yeah, see? And I've done these where you go a half an inch at a time, literally, and that's as far as you get. So it's a process. And it's just, it fills it up and it won't go any farther. Okay. I think we're getting close. It's not that thick of a branch or the trunk. Have to be close. Drill your finger. No. <laughs> I haven't done that before. <laughs> I don't put it in reverse. I just kind of it comes out easily. Like, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, baby. There we go. And turn it so she can see it from the other side. Got it? Okay. And it blows out somewhat back there. Oh, that's not as bad as I expected. Okay, so pull the drill out. This time I'm going to go to reverse because I can. Maybe if I can find it. Got it. <laughs> okay. Phew. Okay, there's our hole. I am going to run a skewer through it just to make sure everything looks great. When you clean, sure, go ahead. So Renee's going to clean the backside. This, the front side looks pretty good. The backside is always going to look a little rough. There's only a couple little threads in here. It's really not bad. Actually, that, that looks very good. You can put a close up of the hole. And Renee is cleaning the back. Okay. From both sides, a little bit of debris came out of that, so it, it helps. All right, because 
the whip goes through the backside out through here. So Renee, you want to start and you don't want to bend it too sharply. This back here, that could break easily. So that's why we have this wire. And as it comes through, hopefully, there's one bud. The buds are really fat. They're fat and they're pointing, and they're pointing out. Yeah. There goes. There's two buds. Oh, you got him. Ah, yay! Okay. Yay. <laughs> so I have three buds, and you leave about. Can you see the half? About a half an inch. You want me to turn? See, you need a space there, even just there, like that, because this is going to be where your branch starts coming out. And you can see how huge the hole is. Besides, you know, it's a, it has to fill up all of that. So what you do is you take a toothpick. Put that in there so that's kind of, that's firm. You got yours in there. <laughs> and once that is in there, it should be stable. You don't ever want to bump any of this because it's stable, but, but if, it, if it's fragile and you have the potential very carefully. Take off the toothpick without taking off the, okay. And then you can push that a little bit farther so it's flush. Okay. My mostly, my failure is in the back because the angle is so acute that it, it cracks and breaks off if I bump this. If, so now we're cut paste. So we're gonna put cut paste around this <clears throat> to help it heal. You don't want to use the liquid because now our cambium connection is there and there. If you put cut paste on it, it could fill that in and then you wouldn't have the connection. So cut paste, seal that up. So because this is connected, that branch is going to be feeding this until the cambium connects. Then this is going to start getting thicker and thicker because it's being fed by the trunk. This will stay, the back part will stay thin and that's how you know it's working. So usually you let it go till this is very obviously much thicker than that, that where the entry point in the back and then you can cut that off. And now we have a branch coming off here where we really need it. And then we can put another one right there. And in the future, this will be just thrown out like any other branch. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any other comments? Anything else to, you can't kind of see it, but as it gets out, that it's gonna fill this area. Mm -hmm. All right, looks good. Way to being a, better a better tree. And it's, see, it's really easy to do. It's fairly easy. Very easy. I wanted to show you a, another technique I tried after I did my recording, and this was by wrapping a branch in Teflon tape, which is extremely slippery. You can slide, you can see where it slid right through the hole and the tip goes out the other side. So here you can see where I've unwrapped it. So you've got three branches on that that have all been pulled into one spot. You've got the hole, it needs to be trimmed, but it's gone through there with no problem whatsoever. And then I, all I need to do is pin it and then put the cut paste on it. So here's two of them that I did. And I thought it's a kind of cool technique to get this to this be more branches immediately. And it, the Teflon tape makes it very simple to slide through the hole. And we're ready to start the next video. This is going to be the Trident Maple with doing root graphs on it. So let's go ahead and see that video. This tree, we are going to do root graphs on. This is a trident maple. And we have taken it out of its pot and you would do this during your potting season. So this is the, the ultimate time to do this. You've pulled it out, you've trimmed back everything and you can examine your roots to see what needs to be done. The other thing I want to cover with the thread graft part for branches, because you also do this in the spring, but an alternate way to do it, and I want to show this because this is perfect. This is grown out as a sacrifice branch. We need a branch right here 
This is kind of wide and it's straight, so it would really benefit to have a branch there. I can pull this up and it almost reaches, it kind of reaches, but we're getting a little tight and that's pretty small. So what we can do is let this grow until May. So it's gonna grow way out farther, defoliate it when you would normally defoliate a, ma a maple, defoliate this top down to there. So you don't have any leaves coming out here. Then you will be able to wire this around, do a thread graft through here. And because this tree is so pumped up when you defoliate, it's almost a better way to do it. You have a probably a better success ratio of going out through this way. There you go, that's it. So I want to show you that just because it's here and we're gonna be, and we're doing thread graphs also. So now back to the roots. I'm gonna turn this around and show you what I've got. So front, this isn't too bad. There's roots all around there. This is pretty ugly. You've got, it's almost like a little horseshoe. So that could, would be a good place to put a root graft. There's a little root right there that could be a place. That's okay. Root there, this is kind of borderline. We're gonna start with the worst one, which is actually, the, and that's another place you could do it. And there's a bump right there. So you'd have to clean that out. I don't know what's going on under there. And this is a big root. And then we've got this, which is this huge wedge. And there's pretty much nothing there. There's little roots, but you need to have something bigger come out of here. This is this is too much. And so then back to the front. So I want to show you what I did when I clean this out underneath. There we have it. And then there were two just big, like this was a solid piece of roots. So we cut out this piece and this funky thing that was like that because I need to make room for my scion, my, excuse me, my whips, keep on calling scions to go into here. So now I'm going to go back up here. It's good. Okay. I have to open this up and I have to find space to put those roots. You don't care. I have cutters. So I've got this root right here, I'm gonna cut that off. And then I have a root. Okay. I think that's okay. I don't care too much about the little ones. So now I've got a space there. I should be able to fit two roots. In there, if you did one, it would almost look like a th another spoke. So if I can wedge two roots into there, that would be nice. Okay, so now we're gonna set this aside and we have to look at our whips and see what we have to use for material. Okay. This is one that came from Murayama's. So it needs to be long, it needs to be straight. This is dramatically taller and it has to be fairly tall. These are from seedlings and they're just not quite tall enough. It has to go all the way through the trunk, up the other side, and you have to, it has to be pointing up. So this is a pretty good size. The only one that might work would be this one. I don't know if you can see, it has a cur it's curly cue there. It has to be straight, especially at the base, because you're going to be threading this through a straight hole that goes through the trunk, through the root base. So that's not going to work. If you're growing from seed like this, you might want to put some wire. If this is what you're going to be using them for, you want these long, you want these straight. Okay. So, so I have this one from Mariamas. I have two others. And I went ahead and I pulled these out. So let's pull this one out. These just fell apart. The roots the, literally fell apart. And it helps to have extras because you don't know 
what's going to work and where you want to put it. So here we have, let's see. You're never going to get past this. So you can go, you could go to here and then you could keep these two roots, take that off. That would work. Mm -hmm. The best part about these, I'm going to show you what is better about these. Well, let's try this one again. Does it bend? Because as you're going through that hole, this is getting a little on the stiff side. I can't really bend that. That one might be too much. So let's look at this one. It's thin, it bends down. This is great because as it goes through the trunk, then you have this bending down, which is what you want the root to do. And this is flexy. So I, it's going to be less of that problem. This one kind of bifurcates there, but see this angle going down? I could, as I put it in, I can decide, do I cut this off and just go with this? Because otherwise this could be potentially sticking straight up out of the ground and that's not going to help you at all. Or if I end up bending it a different way and it pegs to there, I could cut that off and then this would go down. So I have an option there. I'm going to wait and see how it fits into the trunk. Okay, so it looks like these are fairly thin. They should fit into there. So let's see how this is going to. And it's going to be in like that. And then I would have this one. Okay, so this is one option. And it's going to fit down in like that. All right, or let's try it the other way. If you don't want them to cross, you want them separate the way roots, you want roots to grow. So if we go this way, this has a curve that goes off that direction. This one. Go like that. And even though these are going to go going straight in, so it's going to go out a little bit farther, but that that looks good. You're filling into the space. They're fairly close, but separate. They're dividing out. So that's what we're going to go with. Looks good. Okay. So now comes the fun part. You have to drill two holes through here. And they need to be fairly level with the other two roots. You don't want them way high, way down here. You'll have, it'll look strange. So we're going to use a pilot. Drill bit. We're going forward, we are. We're going to be able to hold. Okay. And this, so this is going to come out. I think this is one's going to come out right there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. That was good. And now I want my second one to be fairly parallel to that. And that's just have a nice broad space right here. So it's going to be pretty easy. And that's going to come out, I'm thinking right about there. And I hit kind of that one, that one is easy. And this is very handy to have. It doesn't have to be as big as the drill bit you're going to use for the final opening, but it'll go all the way through and the whips will track through that. All right, going forward. And this is longer, so it's a little bit more of a mm -hmm. challenge. Looks good, Renee. It's helpful if you have somebody that tracks for you. Well, yeah. Yeah? Okay. What? This way, just this way? Yeah, just a little bit that way. Okay, now it's gonna it's not gonna go any farther because I have to lie the tissue in there.
This is usually a little more tedious than the thread graft for a branch because it has a long ways to go. And you don't want to go very fast because it's a little bit to be heat up. So. If people are wondering why you just don't do an approach graft and cut a slot and jam it in there that way, I've tried it. it doesn't work as well for me, but that is an option that people do use. I feel like I'm got to be right about there. Got to be right about there. Yeah. There. Huh. Okay. Well, isn't that interesting? Where that? <laughs> that's uh, okay. So there we yeah, go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, back out. Okay, I've got one more to do. Actually, that at least that's not down in the roots, so it's kind of better that it's not. In the Actually, roots. it's the perfect place. <laughs> yeah. So now you want to probably angle a little bit. We want to come through right there. Yeah. Want to angle it that way. I might go down up a little higher, so it'll definitely at least it'll come through there. Okay. So I, you need to move. If I do that, then these roots are going to cross. Ah, okay. It's more important that this is more parallel. If I go ah, this way, the roots are going to cross. Yes, yes, yes. So okay. I want to, you can see that. I want to make sure if I go like this, there's no way yeah. I can pull that over. Ah, or at least it would be a lot harder, even ah, though it's flexible. I see, I see. So if we pull this over towards it a little bit, okay. Let's see. Let's see that's going to come through. It's going to come through right about there. Right there. Okay. It doesn't have to go down through the roots. It can come up through here. It's, it leaves a fairly small hole. Yeah. Okay, you see both, you see both sides. <laughs> Try not to sigh. On the... <gasps> okay, that comes out. Perfect. Yay. Beautiful. The exit hole. Make sure that it's in that side. Ah. So let's see what we look like. And there is a little bit of roughness there. I can yeah, there is a little bit of rough feel it. Clean it out. Let's try this one. Okay. That side does that side look okay? You're pretty smooth. This is not, yeah, the in the in drill bit usually looks fine. Yeah, I'm going to, and I'll show you. You want to see that part? So I've got one there, one there. On this one, pretty nice. Okay. Cool. And then on this side, one there. And one put basically parallel to it right parallel, there. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. We'll see. To be. Yeah, definitely this one. This one's a hair thinner, but that should also work. So we're going to go in maybe about like that because I have to cover this part before it gets thinner to the other drill bit size. Okay. Lord. Okay, I'll do this, this one first. Okay. 
it was a whole lot easier. All right, feel a run the through it from that side because I pushed debris. Debris. Okay. Same thing. So you can see, can I have another sticker? It's right there. Push this both through. That's that's pretty good. And this can be bent, and those are flexible, so it should be able to be bent like that. And this is where you run into a problem. If you did another one, say I just wanted to do this one too, and I go, okay, I'll drill through here. And next thing you know, you've drilled through that hole. So then you move this stick and there's two sticks. So you've ruined this possibility, one of the possibilities for a root graft. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, we decided which way we're gonna go. Yes, we're gonna go, this one is bending that way. This one's going Right? Yeah. And that's where you could potentially do a approach craft. I don't like them. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use do this one first. And this is going to be fairly simple. As long as these buds are there, it should work, even though it's starting to bud out. And there's the buds. And Renee's going to pull from that side as I push from this side. And it'll start getting a little bit tighter. Tiger, 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 tiger. All right, I'm going to stop right there and let's do the other one because I want to make sure sometimes they kind of jam up against each other. I want to make sure I have room. Yeah, that one was kind of a wimpy. It has an odd little bit. It doesn't, as long as we have buds. There we go. Okay, does it look? Looks fine. And there are little twists and turns on these things. So as you're going, if you need to cut off a little bump, you can. And they're flexible, but they can still break. All right, so this way, so this one we have to decide, is this good like this? And then I cut this off and then I have all this going down. That looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? And then this one's fine pretty much no matter where I put it because it's got roots, yeah, roots everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave as much as I can, maybe a little bit farther. There. Okay, so let's cut off. Good. And we still have lots of roots. Okay, let's look back up here. here. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. And now as that grows out, this whole thing is going to look very complete. And next year, I might do that one. All right. So our last thing we're going to do before we repot it, after we repot it, I can, I'll pull these up now. So, so now you have this in the back. It's a wire. wire. So to keep it out of the way, and you want these pointing up because you want these to grow aggressively. You kind of want them out a little bit from the outline of the canopy but they need to be growing. Aggressively. Okay, you're just gonna wire. I just, oh, I don't care. I don't care. In fact, I can probably, yeah, that's good. It's as long as it's out of your way and they don't, is that gonna work? It's gonna hold this up though. There. It really doesn't matter as long as it's, I know Renee wouldn't do it like this, but hey. <laughs> kind of cut, cut paste. I just did a little cut paste. Yeah. yeah, these holes are more obvious and this is probably gonna heal, but we're gonna put cut paste. And you want on that side also. I 
hard to get underneath by this side though. It's probably not as critical up to, on top. Yeah. On top. So let's take, take a look. So cut paste across there, and then we're going to pot it, repot it. When you repot it, this was in a very shallow pot. We saw the picture of the pot it was in. It needs to be up to the top of that for this to be okay. So I'm going to show you basically where we're, what we're looking at. I'm, probably, I'm not going to do it, but so if you look straight across that, we are about up there. There'll be a little bit of soil in there, so maybe about like that. So that should be good. And then. I need to put a pile in the middle. So we have to fill the hole. Well, it'll fill, you can fill it from above because there's a big space there. Okay, so that's the height of the pot. We are, that looks pretty good. That looks good. Okay. There, going into those roots. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So nice to have an assistant. <laughs> really, it's nice. Okay, I'm going to put a little starter fertilizer just to kind of get things going. Got all the micronutrients and organisms to get the um, plants recharged and I'm going again. No, it just it's for repotting. I just like to put in a little bit of starter fertilizer that has the microorganisms and micronutrients and stuff to kind of get the um, uh, microbial action going in the pot that supports the plant. Go ahead. Good. Yeah. You see that? So this wire right here has bent these down. So that's holding those where I want them to be. So that looks good. I see a big hole right back here. You have to make sure you get this back behind there filled up. Okay. Or some more soil. I did it poorly, hazardly. Use the drill bit. <laughs> it's dirty. <laughs> right. 
and so you would probably want to wait two years I would say I suppose if you really wanted to do more root grafts you could take it out and just wedge out the area that you know you're going to want to put grafts but then you also have to make sure you don't hit where these come across I suppose you could look at it and see but I would probably wait two years then the last thing, the sagamoss. moss, can we just put the moss on it and then they'll believe us when we tell them we're, we're going to water it. <laughs> How do you go ahead and get it done more, huh? That's, it's just the idea. I mean, sometimes I just go around in a little, just a little bit, just a little bit where the graft is. Make sure there's almost enough to do the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. And there we have it. Another not too hard. You just have to do the prep work to have the whips available that are the right species and the right length and straight, narrow. Good drill bits. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody wants to ask about my part of the demos? You'd have to unmute yourself. Why didn't you put a toothpick on your root graft? <gasps> That's the thing I was going to tell everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Vince. <laughs> okay, well, I do have a little bit of a reason. If you drill the hole about the right size for the root, it get pretty... I had them before where I put them in and I couldn't get a toothpick in there if I tried. So there was a little bit more room in there and yes, I should have put a toothpick in there. But sometimes you can't really put one in because it's that snug. Okay, Vince? <laughs> <laughs> I have some cuttings I took off of a tree that I have and I want to root graft them in, but they don't really have buds, they have leaves. Do I need to wait till it's older and has buds? I would say, are they long enough now that they would make it through the trunk and out the other side? They probably would. <sighs> you know, since the whole, so the, at the tip where the buds are is very, very thin, right? And then farther back where the root is, is thicker. Like it's uh -huh. So usually you can get you might be able to get it through the hole because it won't rub off because the hole is quite a bit bigger than the very tip of that branch. So you could still try, but once they start opening up, if it's just swollen, it'll probably go through there because you only need a couple buds at the end when you're doing your root graft because that will continue to grow. Okay. It's worth a shot. How many of them do you have? Oh, I just have two right now. I need to wait. I'll probably wait till next year. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does it have to be from the mother plant or can it be any, any of the same species? So for the thread graft, the branch thread graft has to be exactly the same. So you have a choice. You're doing this and it's going through. It has to be the same. And obviously it is because you're going right through there. For the root grafting, it doesn't have to be. You just have to make sure that the bark on the, your parent tree on the roots is going to fairly well match your root graft bark. They're usually just the same species like trident maple, trident maple, or acer palmatum, acer palmatum. It shouldn't matter. Okay. It shouldn't really matter that much, but you do want to be close because otherwise you might start noticing a difference in the color of a specific root that you've grafted in. Nice, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is Phil out there? You were talking about a different kind of drill bit. I'd like to hear more about that if you're there. Uh, yes. Hi, Carmen. Hi. Yeah, um, I, I do a lot of woodworking as well. And so uh, there's a, a drill bit called the Brad Point that actually has 
three points of contact, a center point, and then two uh, side points. And it, and it uh, that center point is a little longer than the side points. And so when you initially make your hole, that'll grab first and it, and it won't slip. So uh, it, makes for, it makes for a nice clean hole and um, you know, it doesn't blow out as much at the end there. So, um, and I have, I have a little set of Brad points that I use just for my thread graphs. Yeah, I want I wanted to show you a close up of the horn beam. Yeah. Because after we finished our graph, whoops, I need to. We're getting there. Hold on. Not there. Wait, I have to wait for. Oh. Okay, hold on. All right, Jody's iPhone <laughs> spotlight. Okay, Jody's iPhone. Okay. I don't think so. No, it didn't. It's still me. It's it's her below me. Okay. Whoops. Oh well. Anyway, Dodie did another thread graph right below the one we did on this branch, and both of them look very nice. And Dodie did it without a whole lot of prompting, so it is pretty easy to do. It's on the lower ones. It's down below, but it's not really showing. So anyway, they're they're starting to turn green. The buds are swelling and they're turning green, and everything looks wonderful. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to turn this over to Renee and she's going to do the second part for the side grafting of pines and junipers. And she has a slideshow to start with. Okay. okay. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <you>, Renee. <laughs> Where am I here? Excuse me. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Whoops. Well, I hate to do this to you guys, but um, I have another really quick slideshow here where it's sitting kind of late. So I'm going to kind of zip through this thing pretty quickly. Um, this is on side grafting, how black pines, red pines, and junipers. Um, one of the reasons why we uh, do this kind of grafting is sometimes you get a tree that has uh, that's way grown out and you want to bring the foliage and ramification back in closer to the trunk. So you would side graph back onto the branches to, to accomplish that. Um, another reason we would want to side graft is sometimes you have uh, junipers, like some of the collected junipers have really coarse leggy kind of growth on them. Uh, and you just get tired of fighting that battle. So you can uh, graft shimpaku foliage onto this and it gives you a much nicer looking tree. Um, when do we side graft? Uh, in our area, uh, right now, if we're getting kind of the, to the end of the window for side grafting. Uh, you need to do it uh, before or just as the candles begin to push uh, for the pines and for junipers before or just as the new growth begins to push. And, and looking at my pines, they're really, they're really growing right now. So uh, scenario number one for reconstructing branches, the conditions for success of this type. Um, our example is a Japanese black pine. Tree must be healthy. The scions must be from the parent plant. You need the same exact genetic material when you're doing this. Um, Want to plan ahead and start developing scions for next year. Uh, so if you're going to, if you're planning on grafting, you want to, um, you don't want to decandle the material that you think you might need to use for a scion. You just don't decandle that that year. Um, shoots, you use shoots that are uh, one to two years old, vigorous, but not too vigorous, diameter three to four millimeters. And um, you can uh, pre-prepare. I'm gonna just annotate this real quick. Um, this is, whoops, yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. Um, this is the, uh, this little uh, side branch right here. This is what I'm going to use for my scion. I uh, did not decandle it. I already pulled the needles on it to kind of prep it for uh, uh, side grafting. So it's kind of ready to go right now. Uh, there it goes. Same thing for a six, uh, scenario number two, uh, conditions for success when you're replacing Juniper foliage, you want both trees, the parent and the donor tree to be nice and healthy. Um, if you're 
You want all scions that you're going to use to replace foliage to be from the same uh, donor plant. So if um, annotate, if you're going to if you're going to do several years worth of grafting, because I know um, um, the juniper grafting is a little more difficult than pines. You ha I have a much less lower success rate on my juniper um, uh, grafting. So you might, uh, you want to keep this plant around. So each year that you want to add um, grafts to this plant, you want to use the same donor plant. So you need to keep it healthy and growing. Um, start developing scions now for next year. You want that nice, strong, this, these nice, strong growing tips. This is what you want for your uh, scions. You want it vigorous and three to four diameters in millimeter, a millimeter in diameter, excuse me. I'm trying to hurry here. Okay. This is just understanding the cambium uh, of a woody branch. Uh, Carmen already explained that a little bit, but it's really important when you're doing side grafting because you're actually cutting the scion off of a plant. There's nothing to give that little piece of foliage um, nutrition unless you get the cambium or the cambial layer matched with the cambial layer of the scion matched with the cambial layer of the parent tree. So uh, the cambium is on the outside. Um, it's a small layer of cells that divides. Uh, when it differentiates to the inside, it becomes xylem. When it differentiates to the outside, it becomes phloem. So that is the, the cambial layer this is the area that you need to get matched up with the scion. So I took um, a, a juniper and a pine scion just to kind of give you guys uh, an example to show on the pine. This is the pine. This green area around the edge here, this is the cambial layer. You can see how much thicker on the pine it is than on the juniper. This is the pine. The juniper, you can hardly even see it around the edge. That's what makes junipers a little more difficult to uh, do side grafting. Wait, the, po the point that I want to make here is um, that when you're lining up the scion, only one side of the scion is going to line up with the, the insertion cut on the um, parent tree. So this is the, oops, why am I not getting my, oh, there it is. Ah. Um, on this one, you can see the scion is lined up on this side with the parent tree on this one, this is the opposite side. You can see there's a gap here. So it, just to show that only one side is lined up. On this one, I just wanted to show the difference in diameter between the um, parent branch and the scion. So just getting prepared, you wanna make sure that all, you have all of your tools and materials organized. You want a sharpening stone, raffia, sharpie. I'm using the parafilm technique for uh, wrapping my scions. There's various methods for doing that. Uh, I have found that this works best for me, so that's what I'm sharing with you, but there are other methods. You want a smooth, hard surface for cutting the, um, the scion on, scissors, tape, and strong glasses if you need them like me because my eyesight's so bad anymore. And then you want to assemble all your tools and materials and trees in a well-lighted area. Um, get prepared, continue. Um, first of all, choose the site on the tree where you want to place the, the scion, where you want to make your cuts and mark it with a Sharpie pen. Um, let's see. Then you choose the scion material. So everything, you have everything in your mind, exactly how it's gonna work. So before you even start. Okay, this is the black pine scion. Um, we uh, 
cut the cyan off the tree, reduce the needle mass to like eight to 10 needle pairs. Then we take a, it's about a three quarter inch wide section of parafilm uh, to wrap the scion in starting at the base. Want to start here at the base and then wrap upward so that the um, needle mass is, oops, covered with the parafilm. Um, I'll show you when I do the, the live demo that you have to stretch the parafilm. The beauty of it is that you can stretch it really thin, wrap it, and it makes a little cocoon. And then as the, the scion grows, it actually just kind of pushes its way out. So you really don't have to, and once it's set, you don't really have to do anything. Then um, for cutting the scion, for making the cuts, for the insertion cuts, you want a long, uh, one side to be long and then the other side to be short. Okay, in inserting and fin in inserting and finishing the graft. So the insertion cut about a 30 degree angle into the branch. You want the length of this cut to be the length of the long cut on the scion so that they match up um, almost exactly. So Look at your scion, see how long that long cut is. That's how long you have to make the insertion cut. Yeah, insert the, um, the scion, long side toward the, uh, toward the branch, short side up toward the, uh, the flap of the cut. Then uh, wrap it with the wet raffia and finish it by um, wrapping parafilm, covering the raffia, the cut area, and any part of the scion that is exposed. Uh, with uh, parafilm. Aftercare, you want to protect the graft from full sun. Um, if, if looking at it, you can tell that the graft is taking, it'll stay green. You'll see condensation appearing inside the parafilm. Um, sometimes you'll see the candle growing and it looks like it might be having trouble pushing its way out. You can make take a little sharp um, object and make a, a hole so that the, the um, candle can push its way out of the parafilm. Um, if it's successful, don't disturb it for two years. Give, this, give it a really good chance to fuse well before you try and wire it or do anything to it. Um, this is um, pine, uh, this is what it will look like next year if, the, if it is successful. Um, this is the insertion. This is a uh, graph that I did last year. This is the insertion uh, area. You can see where it's fused. It still isn't really, you know, well fused. So we just leave it alone for another year. On this side, um, these three were, that have the zip ties on them, these are three from last year. Uh, I put the zip tie on just to stabilize that. Um, um, uh, graft area in, in case, um, you know, a bird lands on it or the wind blows really hard. Um, something like that might um, disturb the, the graft area. So just to make sure, but you got to watch it to make sure that um, it doesn't swell or anything in those areas. Um, these are uh, two year scions. These were done two years ago. I'm still going to leave these for another year before I do anything with them. Uh, next year for the juniper on this one, you can see um, the, uh, the tips of the juniper foliage are starting to push out through the uh, parafilm. That's the beauty of parafilm. You just leave it alone and let it grow. I also put a zip tie on this to stabilize it. And um, so that concludes the, the slideshow portion. Now we're going to go to a live demo so I can kind of go through this again and the finer details with you. Let's see. Scissors. Okay. So here we have our, our black pine that we're going to do a uh, side graft on. Um, so anyway, this is going to be my scion. 
And then we come up here to the top of the tree. Uh, I've chosen the spot where I I'm going to put my my graft. I'm going to put my graft right in this area. So I've already marked it with a sharpie. So we're going to. Oh, I can't do it with this one. Oops. We're going to cut this off. We'll cut. Uh, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hurry. Cut off the scion. So there's our scion. Already has like eight needle pairs. So on this guy, we have a piece of parafilm. About that. About three quarters of an inch wide. Oops. Parafilm is just, it's a laboratory product. Um, you can get it on the internet. All it is, is just a, a sheet form of paraffin. Uh, the beauty of it is, I will show you here, you can stretch it and it stretches very thin. If you very carefully, don't jerk it or anything, but just carefully stretch it out. It gets really, really thin. So it makes a really nice wrap around the scion and the, the um, whoops, See, that happens sometimes too. Oh well. There's some flaws. Whoops. Flaws in it. Dang. Probably old. Probably very old. Anyway. There, we got that. Okay. Start wrapping at the base. You know, this is almost beyond the point where it is a good. It's just grown to, we're a little bit late this year. Everything budded out early. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit mature. So it's, you start at the base, wrap. Oops. Get this started. And you said it grew. Yeah, like it's a quarter of an inch in the last week. Yes, it just, man, it started growing. It's, it's like, it's almost too, it's almost too grown. But you overlap the um, the parafilm like about a, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch. Hmm. I'm not doing this very good. That's okay. There we go. That's getting better. Now we're getting better. It's getting it started sometimes. It's the hard part. And I have another, I'm just going to use this piece to finish it off with. And so it's nice, nicely wrapped up. It has a little cocoon. Uh, it's all sealed. Keep all the moisture in. So now I look at this and it's like, how am I going to put this on the branch? It kind of curves up this way. So I'm going to want to make my long cut on the bottom. So it will fit in like this. So I'm going to take this and do my long cut on the bottom. My glasses here. So when you're making your cut, um, you want to have the, um, you know, a really nice sharp grafting knife. You want to keep the knife blade parallel to the cutting surface. And you want to make one nice smooth cut. You don't want to saw or disturb it at all. You want to make one nice smooth cut like that. The reason for that is if you, any little damage to the cambio layer will decrease your um, chances for success. So that's a very important part of it. So now that's the long side. I'm gonna turn it over, do the short side, same thing, knife blade parallel, one nice smooth cut. So we have long side, we have short side. I'll keep it in your mouth. You'll keep it in your oh, mouth? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> My assistants are, um, Wonderful here. <laughs> so, you know what? I need this to be a little bit lower. I didn't, wasn't thinking of that. Uh, I 
I need to be lower or I need to be higher. Oh well, we'll do it this way. Okay. So this is my mark at a 30 degree angle. And having a mask on and trying to wear glasses is just problematic here. So we're going to make it the insertion cut. Is that long enough? No. Mm -hmm. Not long enough? No. A little bit more? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. So then, lining up the, uh, the cambio layers, you want to insert the uh, scion all the way into the, the base of that cut, lining up the outside edge. Ah. Oops. I'm having technical difficulties here. Looks pretty good. Does that look pretty good? Mm -hmm. It's fairly solid looking. Yeah, you got it there. Yeah, I think that's good. I can't get it closer. Mm -hmm. So then, once that's inserted, uh, we're going to tie it off with parafilm. No, raffia. I mean raffia. Excuse me. Raffia. Yes, keep me, keep me on. <laughs> keep me going here, guys. So we just wrap it. Excuse me. Raffia. I like to wrap the whole um, insertion area with raffia. Oops. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, trim it and wrap it with her film. Bring it all. Looks like it, huh? Okay. Looks like it's all covered. All right. And then to seal this little area at the um, the very base here, put in a little daub of um, cut paste. And that's it. Now you just leave it alone and let it grow. What time is it getting to be? It's time for our next time for our next tree. Time for our next tree. I'll get it ready. This is assembly assembly line <laughs> assembly line grafting we got going here. So next tree is going to be uh, California juniper. Um, I've chosen the grafting side on this. I'm going to put one here. Actually, I'm going to do uh, about three or four more on this, but I'm just going to do one tonight. I'm going to try one right in here. I choose the site. It's nice and smooth, no scar tissue or anything. Um, so that's where I'm going to place the graft. The old one? Oh, last year's? Where is it? Where's the difference? Three of them. So, uh, whoops. So the, these are some that I did last year. I think I tried seven last year and three of them took. So not a real good percentage, but hopefully I'll get better as time goes on. Down there. Okay. Okay. 
So that's the grafting side. I am going to choose my piece of grafting material, a uh, good strong uh, shoot here. So I'm just going to cut this off down in here someplace. Um, looking at this, I'm looking for um, a couple of really nice, strong um, uh, lateral um, pieces of foliage that I can use for my uh, scion. Um, looking in this area, let's see that one, that one, maybe those three. Maybe I'll use those three. So I'm going to, all the, the excess ones, the ones that are down here below, I'm going to cut these guys off. So I think, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to take these three little guys, they're going to be my Scion, and then I'm going to take off the tip here. Don't want it too strong. Um, now we need parafilm to wrap. Same thing as with the pine, we start at the base of the foliage and wrap up and overlapping. Oh, I don't know, about a third, I guess, of the width. So that little cocoon completely, you know, pull it real tight. You do not pull it real tight. No, it does not. You don't really want it too tight. Got to give those, you know, the, the little tips in there room to grow. You don't want to squish it down too much. So there, I'm ready. We're going to make the cut. Let's see, I want to put it here. So, whoops, wow. I mean, I have to do that at a little bit of an angle. Oops, either that or take that one off. I'm gonna take that off. It's gonna get in my way. So I'm gonna put this in here. Uh, is there a good way to put this? No, it doesn't really, probably there. That's probably where I want it. A little bit of a curve, a little bit of a curve there. So we're going to put the long side on this side. Blade parallel, one nice smooth cut. Flip it over. Smooth cut. Long side, short side. Yeah. Assistant, put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go in here and make our insertion cut. <laughs> oh dear. I think I cut that. I was too, had too much of an angle there. I'm going to go right through the branch. I'm going to have to pick another place. I'm going to have to pick another place. I was going to, oh, I was going to put one up there anyway. Yeah, I almost, the reason I, uh, I'm not going to do it there now is because I, I made the cut a little bit too deep. It's kind of a thin branch and I almost went through the branch. So I'm not going to do that. We're going to come back over here and choose one of these other ones where I was going to put a graft. So let's put it right in here. That looks like a good spot. Kind of a thin branch, but. I'm not going to go as deep on this one. This is a little bit harder. Is that good? Okay. Lining up the outside here. Does that look like it's good? Yeah, that's pretty firm. Okay. So now we're going to tie this off. 
being careful not to have to bump it. It's hard to do. See, this is a little bit too high. It's hard for me to see what I'm doing here. I think I can get it with this time. That way, this, one, this works good. It's a nice piece of raffia. It's a good piece of raffia. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for being. A, thank you for being such a nice piece of raffia. Sometimes they shred and fall apart. So. Okay. Kind of. Raffia. Oh, you're right. Having assistance is really nice. <laughs> it's wonderful, yes. So now we're going to put the cover the area with the raffia. Oops. Yeah. Let's see, that's what happens. Dang it. I kind of got it messed up here. Oh well. Get it back out to the I'm surprised Kitty isn't here because this was something she said she'd been looking forward to seeing. Who's this? Oh, that's a Kitty. Kitty's not here. Yeah, Kitty's it's, always here. Yeah. Where's Kitty? It's being recorded, so it will be on the uh, website in a few days. So here, now I have a little bit of exposed. Um, Scion here, so I'm going to wrap it this around. There goes. I know. Careful. I'm not being careful. Get it from, get it from the back and then go over it that way. Okay. Holding it. Oh, uh -huh. thank you, thank you. Yes, that that helps a lot. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. One more time. One more time. Thank you. Oops, what else is hung up on that? Yeah. I think you're there. Yeah, the pull. I'm going to come back down here to pull it. Come right back down here so I don't pull on the on the scion there. Okay. Okay, so it's wrapped. We're going to put a little dab of cut paste to seal the hole. And now we just wait and watch. And hopefully it takes the other two. So that's kind of it. Um, I have one more thing to share. Um, this was a, a, a little California juniper that I won at the Modesto show it was a demo that Sam Medina did but it was a California juniper that looked a lot like the one I was just working on it had really lanky foliage and I worked with it for several years and I just couldn't get it to to compact at all so um, I started grafting this one and uh, between Peter and I we got a lot of the grafts to take I did where's our white piece of paper oh, okay I did, um, I saved this one, yeah. I saved this one just as an example of what happens if the, the, um, the uh, graft hasn't fused really well and you try to wire it, um, you can lose things. So it's really good idea to make sure, to make sure that these grafts have fused really well. That's a, one of the reasons why I like to put a, a little piece of, a zip tie on it sometimes too, even when I'm working on it, I'll just leave that zip tie on there to make sure that the, the fusion area is, is very secure. So 
That's it. Any questions? Yay. I know what the question is going to be. Is it over yet? <laughs> you guys did an amazing job. <laughs> so, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, we're going to, re we've recorded this, we're going to put it on the website. Um, so, yeah, the question is, are you for hire? <laughs> <laughs> Our, our Zoom team is not, but boy, I appreciate all the work that went into this. We've had multiple practice sessions and a lot of help. Yeah. And I wanted to thank Paul for editing my videos, which would have been agonizing if they had not been cut for yeah. time. So, <laughs> and Dodie is our camera person and lighting person and went back and forth between everything. It's been quite the process. Yeah, it's been it's been, quite, it's been a journey, but it's been fun. We've learned a lot, and yes. I hope you enjoyed it for all of the work. <laughs> nice, thank you. And then, pardon? Nice, thank you very much. Okay, well, we're going to have a really a very quick. Oh, sure, there's a question or two. Quick business meeting. If nobody has any questions, um, for our APAS members.